question is how how did Sam Bankman Free get away with what he's doing for so long? Is that is that how you want to start this episode? Yeah. Hello, everybody. That's how we want to start this episode. Welcome back to the Daily Thread. We've been talking about Sam Bankman Free, but what the heck is on my shoes? Water. That is not water. Oh, what is that? Oh my god. I don't know what. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, hey, for everyone who's wondering, this we started the episode. We well, started the episode. I, I don't think anybody was wondering about that. We started the episode, but then I noticed something was on the bottom of my shoe, <laughs> and then it got into my pants, and now it's. I don't think you want to. Are you really recording that? I am. Okay, it's, it's your thing. <laughs> okay. Anyways, welcome back to the Daily Thread. Um. Okay. Good morning, everybody. We have some mail. We have some mail. Oh, we so. do. We have mail. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, I'm ready to listen. I never see the mail. I never see the mail before yeah, you read it. Got you got mail. Okay. I never so see the mail before you read it. We got an email, and the title of the, uh, the subject is Definition of Orthodox Judaism. Okay. I'm not going to mention their name. I don't know if I want, they want to be mentioned. Thank you so much for your thought-provoking <coughs> and entertaining content. I believe that the three major pillars of Orthodox Judaism are being Shomer Shabbos, keeping kosher, and Taharis Mishpacha. How one upholds all the other nuances is what moves the sliding scale from left to right. I am led to believe that Ben Shapiro has the correct notion that the compromise he is discussing in this article would not align with Orthodoxy. This is obviously something all the Orthodox Rabbanim need to clarify. Is that it? That's that email. Okay. Um, and we have another one. And the other one goes like, like this. this. Hi there. I think something should be clarified in terms of the Jewish LGBTQ community. I personally am not part of that community. And I don't know much about it either way. I feel it needs to be said that whether it is the right or wrong thing, or if it goes against halacha, it is important to note that there is no such thing as a bad thing. Feeling. I don't. I don't. I don't get. It. I sort of. This is something I have been taught many times, and it's important. It's important to make sure that these people who are definitely challenged do not walk around feel feeling guilty for the way they feel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I don't know what that means. I don't understand uh, that letter. Um, but you know, it's very important to have an open discussion about the, all these issues, uh, and uh, I think uh, it's a big, uh, it's a giant step forward uh, for for everybody listening to this uh, to this podcast. Uh, and uh, these these are very real issues that have to that have to be addressed. Hundred percent, and have to be uh, spoken about. Uh, so we we jumped in yesterday, and uh, we uh, we we talked about it. It's it's a, it's an issue that. Uh, we have to uh, grapple with and get get a handle on. And uh, what should I say? Try to understand it. We could try. We'll try the best as we can. But it's always important to have discussions. We want to give a big thank you to our friends at Quality Stairs for sponsoring this episode. Um, Shmuley Sugar, you know the bit, guys. You want your stairs to be as sweet as sugar. You also want to deal with a nice, honest, menstrual guy. And that's Shmuley Sugar. This business has been around for quite the while, over 70 years, passed down from generation to generation. So go ahead and give Shmuley Sugar a call. Uh, number is 917-941-0214. That's 917-941-0214. And you can mention that you saw this on the Daily Thread. You know what else we have for today? Wow, what else? A little bit of a surprise. Our friends from Brooklyn sent us a little gift. Are some you kidding? You kidding? Chocolate pudding. <laughs> oh, man. We have some chocolate pudding from Renaissance. Um, <laughs> how did this get here? <laughs> maybe that's what I stepped on. Um, how, did, how did it get here? How did it get here? Yeah. Amen. Is that is that the is, really it, good. is that the pudding you've been looking for? Uh huh. Exactly. Almost like my mommy used to make. Oh man, that's how did it get how did it get here? They make good chocolate pudding. You know. There goes the episode. Right. Very good. Mm. Can you imagine someone sent a chocolate pudding? How how did it get here? Why don't you answer the question? <laughs> Someone who's not watching this and just listening, we just got chocolate pudding. Walked in on set. <laughs> How did it get here? How did it get here? Nissan, uh, it was Ubered in last night. Really? To your house? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's amazing. Like I said the other day, the, 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 the wide range of things we discussed here. Yeah. It like goes in one ear and comes out the other ear, except for one thing. You, you, chocolate pudding. You had mentioned you like, you like money also. I, I did mention that people uh, maybe could if I they want to mention send. that, and uh, we have a couple of banks across the street. You know, don't you don't have to send anything. You don't have to Uber anybody or anything. You can always uh, make a check payable to uh, to what's it called? Um, Daily Thread. Daily Thread or to uh, Meaningful Minute. We're not doing that. We're not asking for money. But no, we're not. We're not asking for money. Let me emphasize that. Not. 
Barack Obama tweeted yesterday, uh, I consider December 14th, 2012, the single darkest day of my presidency. The news from Sandy Hook Elementary was devastating, a visceral blow, and like so many others, I felt I felt not just sorrow, but angered at a world that could allow such things to happen. Obviously, yesterday was, uh, yesterday was the, the 10th anniversary of Sandy, Sandy Hook, Hook, which took place on a Friday afternoon. I remember that vividly. Kids, 26 young kids Unbelievable. Were, were murdered by a, a deranged gunman. You know, yeah. it's just... Uh, well, I believe killed his own mother. Even now. I, I don't think I don't think uh, you know. Just guns flow pretty freely in a, in, a, in a great deal of the world, but uh, I don't think anybody uh, has the kind of mass shootings like we have here in the United States. It's, it's really got to do something about it. It's uh, what could they do? I don't know. What, I don't know what they could possibly uh, do about it. The the the, the president, uh, the Congress, the Senate, the House. They try. They're fighting over legislation because we have a Second Amendment that. Uh, is the you know guarantees people the right to bear arms uh, means that you know you you can you can protect yourself most of the most of the people in the United States you know don't live uh, on top of each other like uh, doing from communities you know they could live uh, half a mile apart from one another in very in isolation yeah. and uh, if someone's up to no good you have to have the wherewithal and the means to uh, to protect yourself 100% and uh, that's not what the original intent of the second amendment was but that still well, is the, the 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 I think the intent of the Second Amendment was yeah. if the government goes tyrannical, tyrannical. Yes, uh, that that is the whole idea. To I feel like uh, that intent is a little bit f- more far fetched than, than what it, we just it, mentioned. It, it, it used to be more far fetched. Um, you see it. You see how government can get out of control and do devious. Well, things. Look at January sixth. That was a little bit crazy. Oh, no, how about looking what they did during the COVID lockdowns? You know, January sixth was here in the morning and gone in the afternoon. Yeah, but you know what? The COVID lockdowns here. I don't think. I, I mean, like the COVID lockdowns. I don't think we had to fight against it, anybody. It, it paralyzed people. It set back a generation of children educationally. Okay, it destroyed businesses. People lost their jobs. Um, it, uh, I, I hear China really has that issue right now. And China, they, they have they have a big issue when it comes to that. Know, and China, the China issue is not as big as the issue in the United States. Of course, in China, the people aren't free. You know, they, they're living in a, in a dictatorship. And uh, they, um, what are you guys doing? All right, I'm going to have some chocolate pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically, I got a phone call. I needed the answer, so. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right, very good. How's the pudding? It's really excellent. Okay, let's well, get this back. Is, okay, this is what my mother used to make on Thursday nights. Okay, let's hear that. No, we've heard that already. Uh, I that, never heard what your mother made on Thursday night. That was the I t- I did. T- I used to make like spaghetti and uh, either salmon or tuna croquettes. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember yeah, cringing know, at the tuna you know, croquettes. You don't know what a croquette is, so uh, it's like a it's like a pierogi. You think that's like a knitted yarmulke? It's like a ravioli, like a croquetted uh, yarmulke, except it's crocheted. But you call it croquette. <laughs> I feel, like that was att- I feel like that was an attempt to make fun. No, uh, listen for a change. What did, your, what did your mother make for Shabbos? Um, because well, your uh, Bobby, your your mother was very American. Yeah, she was, but she made all traditional foods. She made the very good uh, filter fish and chicken soup and uh, traditional stuff. Chicken potato, potato kugel. kugel. Yeah, absolutely, potato kugel and um, you know all good things. Um, for Shabbos, the chopped liver sometimes. Do you miss Do you miss Shabbos and Crown Heights? You, you obviously grew up there and you, you lived there for a very long time. Do you miss spending Shabbos and Crown Heights? You know, that, that's, that's, uh, that requires a very complicated sociological uh, analysis because after my first few years in Yeshiva, I didn't go to Lubavitch Yeshiva anymore. I went to Yeshiva Eastern Parkway for 6th, mm-hmm. 7th, and 8th grade. Then I went to Masifta um, Crown Heights for two years. And then I went to Chaim Berlin for two years. Chaim Berlin. Now people think I couldn't. Be, I know people think I couldn't stay in any one yeshiva. So I wasn't. I was a very good kid. But not, not that I. Not, not not that all the yeshivas wanted me. I, I met a guy once in Florida who was on eight yeshivas, and he was eighteen years old. I told him he shouldn't feel bad that it's not his fault that every yeshiva wanted him. But that wasn't uh, my situation. My situation was the yeshivas kept going out of business, and I had to find a new yeshiva. So if the Crown Heights closed down after 10th grade, and it got absorbed by Chaim Berlin. Well, I was in the first year on Coney Island. It's a really live fishy yeshiva, Chaim Berlin. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, so, so that's what it was. But I was there, you know. You still never recovered. Uh, no, I'm not saying it was a good experience. I enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, you still you still never uh, got I back. To, you still to, never got back to your Hasidic roots. I, I remember uh, Rav Hutner. Rav Hutner's yard site was yesterday. Yes, I, I remember Rav Hutner and uh, Rav Ari Shechter when he was a young man. I remember. I remember Mishmer in that in that base medrash on Coney Island Avenue. Shortly, 
shortly after it was built. And you know, I was I was brought up davening, uh, you know, the Sahari in, in in Crown Heights. So my first few uh, weeks, the first few months, actually, <laughs> what are you laughing about? In Chaim Berlin, you know, the, the, no one goes up to the Ahmed to daven in Chaim Berlin until Baruch Hu. Okay, I think right. it's the same like in Shor I think they do that. Yeah, also. no one goes, no one goes yeah. up, no one goes up to the Ahmed until Baruch Hu. Yeah. Well, I mean, Shor is an outgrowth of of Chaim, Chaim Berlin. Berlin yeah. Freifeld was a Talmud, uh, but I'm, when I was I was like, what was I? I was fifteen or sixteen years old, and I thought to myself, this is a great yeshiva. Don't even start till Baruch Hu. You know, they come into they come into Shor and nothing's happening until Baruch Hu. And then, boy, before you know it, you're at the end of davening, and it's time for time for breakfast. But then, after a few weeks, I caught on that you're supposed to daven up to Baruch Hu oh my gosh. by yourself. Then they send the Baltvila up to the... Uh, but that's how it is when you're uh, not prepared. That that's how it is when you're a fish out of water. When you're thrown into a yeshiva all of a sudden because your previous yeshiva closed. I don't even know if they told us it's the like, It's like closed. a litvish kid doing Hagwa for the first time in a Chabad. In a Chabad I, don't know, I don't even know if they told us that the yeshiva closed. If the crowd is closed. I think they just told us to, just told us to move to Coney Island Avenue. <laughs> but never actually moved. <laughs> no, it was, a new, it was another yeshiva. There was no signs outside. This just in. It happens to be like, an, it doesn't usually happen, but there's some breaking news while we're middle of the show. Really? Uh, Donald Trump, you said yesterday, uh-huh. he has a major announcement on Truth Social. And that, that major announcement just broke minutes ago and this is kind of laughable like this is like i feel like donald trump is hitting rock bottom here i'll put the picture over here major announcement my official donald trump digital trading card collection is here these limited edition cards feature amazing art of my life and career collect all of your trump digital trading cards very much like a baseball card but hopefully much more exciting go to collecttrumpcards.com and get your cards now only 99 dollars each would make a great uh, Xmas gift. Don't wait; they will be gone. I believe very quickly. And that's it's a it. picture of Donald Trump that's in like a superhero outfit. You know and what? This the, is the, this, this is this rock is, bottom. This is what rock bottom looks like. This is becoming uh, his campaign is becoming a comedy. It, this is really bad. I, I think he knows that he's uh, politically done, and um, he has a he has a base. You know, uh, I don't know several million people for sure. You know, in, in the really United bad. States, and this is a way to uh, to market and to to make money. Uh, somehow, people that are going to order this stuff. It's, I mean, there's a Donald R. Trump. Uh, R.I.P. Donald Trump's political career. There's a Donald Trump uh, game. There's a Donald Trump uh, comic book. Anything for a quick buck? I don't know. What is this? This is so. This is so strange. Uh, listen, they say the uh, uh, business of America is business. Yeah, that's how. Uh, that's how America America works uh, on business. Uh, it happens to yesterday. Um, Ukrainian President Zelensky met Rabbi Moshe Margaritan. Um, really, where? Yeah, in, in, Kiev, in Kiev. I believe. I believe in Kiev. Okay, what's the uh, what was the agenda? I I don't know what the agenda was exactly. I think it says here via Balaz that the meeting was arranged by Zelensky's father, who was inspired by Tzedek's work in aiding Ukrainian refugees and sending eleven ambulances since the beginning of the Russian invasion. Uh, during the meeting, Rabbi Moshe Margaretin gave over warm regards to several U.S. senators. Margaretin then gifted Zelensky <coughs> with a silver engraved mezuzah. President Zelensky thanked him for the gift, saying that he is sure that he, it will it will watch over him. Um, Moshe Margaretin is a is a legend. I met him actually by the Kinnis Ashluchim. Okay, um, he's like one of those what Lamed Vavniks. What are they? Yeah, that's what they called. Like he so, is doing well, so much and he, he's so low profile. He was well, he was involved in what getting people. He sent uh, aid. He sent ambulances. He sent. It says. Uh, Sedek's work in aiding Ukrainian refugees and sending eleven ambulances uh, to get them out of Ukraine when the war started. Yeah, that's really amazing. It's a, it's a, listen, it's an amazing what one person that keeps his eye on the, on the prize, on the goal, yeah. uh, can accomplish, not just uh, sitting on the sidelines uh, watching the news or uh, or making the news. It's really it's really incredible. Uh, some sad news out of Staten Island, unfortunately. I don't know if you remember, years ago, um, there was an accident where Rabbi David Winiers passed away, the Facebook rabbi, and his wife um, mm-hmm. passed away the other day. Mm-hmm. So you have, you have 10, 10 Yusayman. You have really? ten, you have ten children. She, I think, passed away rather, rather sudden. I think she had, you know, something. She was sick for a very, very short time. Really sorry to and, hear that. Um, Broke dynamics. Yeah, we wish our condolences to them. And I think there's gonna be, I think there's gonna be a link that people can help out the family in this in this trying time. Um, but so we'll. Uh, yeah, Robertson Whiteman from uh, the husband, the wife of um, uh, Rabbi Whiteman, who headed up uh, Torah Academy for Girls in Far Rockaway for many years. Levi is today, uh, as well. It's a somber she, day. She lived in Far Rockaway for a long time. On the brighter side, uh, in Eretz Yisrael, Rabbi Chaim Druckman, 
uh, is, was 90 years old and he was very, very ill the last few days and unconscious. And, uh, you know, people were davening for him all around the world. And this morning on our Sheva, the news is that he woke up yesterday and was able to communicate with his family. And hopefully he's, uh, he had COVID uh, and other complications, uh, but hopefully he's on the way to, uh, to recovery. Baruch Hashem. Um, you know, today, Thursday sort of is the day we're going to wrap up. We're going we're gonna to like, you know, go through the week and things that are going on. Obviously next week is Hanukkah. It's very exciting. Right. So I'm on Twitter here and I see a tweet from the Jewish meme, the Jewish meme queen. Good morning to everyone except the bakeries that think they can charge $5 for a donut. I'm old enough to remember when they cost 65 cents. Don't even get me started on the dairy donuts. You'll need to get a second mortgage on the house to afford those. You know, we spoke about it. Honestly, I think five bucks is cheap for a donut. You can get a donut for a lot more expensive than that, no? Listen, you know, first of all, it depends what kind of budget. What was a donut when you were growing up? On. I don't remember. You'd probably give them up for free. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I really wasn't a big fan of jelly donuts when I was. Uh, I don't like jelly donuts. I was very young. I do you not like, like jelly you like donuts. donuts. I like. I like. Yeah, like I like your, classic. Your mother likes plain donuts. Yeah, does she? Yeah, but um, I think uh, I think I think um, uh, Hanukkah is all around all about jelly donuts. No, or is it just donuts? I think donuts, and donuts, latkes, menorahs. Speaking of menorahs, uh, the biggest menorah was put up somewhere. Somewhere. Where was the biggest menorah put up recently? <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, there's a, I, I posted a video on my status of uh, them uh, bringing the uh, the big menorah to the hotel that's going to be led every night by uh, different dignitaries. Oh, I think what I was referring to is the, the new Lego store in Tel Aviv is having right. a lighting of the world's biggest Lego uh, Hanukkah menorah created by Yitz of Jewish Brick. And we'll show a picture over here of, of this Lego menorah. I just think it took way too much time to create that. That's uh, really some, that's a piece of that's art. That's a Lego. That's really nice. That's a lot of Lego. What happens when you light the the wicks uh, on there? I'm not sure. I mean, isn't that like plastic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they thought that. I don't think they thought. I don't think they thought about it that far. Well, maybe they have a miracle of Hanukkah. Maybe we should bring it up to them. <laughs> I mean, what is Lego made out of? It's not made out of a lot of, lot of bricks, exactly. I don't know. I well, don't we'll know. see what happens after the first night. <laughs> <laughs> after it burns, after the first uh, thing burns down a little bit. Anyway, as you know, we're leaving to Eretz Yisrael on on Monday. Yeah, and we'll be uh, we'll be lighting the uh, let me see one two the third uh, candle, the third wick uh, on Tuesday evening uh, in Yerushalayim uh, Era Kodesh, and we have uh, very extensive plans. We make very very big plans before we go to Israel, and if we do ten percent of what we planned, then it's a successful. A successful uh, mission. A successful, it's very exciting, you know. A successful trip. Hanukkah is, you know, I was here a couple, a few years ago. We were with you when you were there. I think um, I was, no, I was, before COVID, before COVID, and there was, this, there was there's live music every night in the Mamila Mall. Every night. Yeah, during Hanukkah. And they're giving out, there's balloons and there's gifts for kids and so on and so forth if the weather cooperates. And I think it was three years ago, I read in the Jerusalem Post the next morning that um, there was a delegation from Bahrain Bahrain. That was dancing with Israelis to celebrate Hanukkah right there in the in the heart of uh, Jerusalem. It's interesting. You know what's so, so so interesting about that? I think Avi Berkowitz, who, who we had mentioned, just got engaged. Yes. Supposedly his wedding is in Dubai. Really? Yeah. Why? I, I don't know. That's what you call a destination wedding. <laughs> I guess. I I guess. It's just so funny. Obviously, he was very, very uh, close with... Um, with the people in the UAE, you know, striking the, the peace deal with Israel. So I guess... Well, as long as we're talking about weddings, last night was uh, the wedding of um, Jeff and Tammy uh, Landy's son, uh, Ruby, <laughs> uh, last night at uh, in Beverly Hills, California. Oh, you went? California. You I were there? Go. I didn't go. And uh, last Saturday night was uh, Elon Portnoy's wedding took place in Mexico City. Mexico City? Yes. Anyway, that's... The uh, Jews are scattered all over the world. <laughs> destination weddings. Uh, this is a great video, by the way. I saw this video on Twitter. Um, of a Yud Tess Kislev I bring in NYU. Check out this video. Right, bro. That's what you call <laughs> Uferatsta. Uferatsta means to uh, to spread out. Yeah. Know. East, west, north, south. How speaking of spread out, it's pretty spread out to, for to be a your Tesla your Tesla if I bring it in YU. Well, listen, you had a it's, uh, like, it's like water and fire. But uh, you had a you had uh, it was a lot of Hatsuka Yidden in uh, in Yeshiva University. Yeah, and you had a, a rock in uh, your Tesla Kislev uh, here in the five towns, and uh, in in many many uh, many many locations. That is true. 
That is it, true. It's uh, you know, it's a uh, it's the wellsprings of uh, of Hasidus that are uh, just springing, that are uh, branching out and and capturing people and bringing them closer to the to, to the whole relationship with uh, with Hashem. Uh, and uh, also, we started the new uh, study of Tanya, which is uh, something. Tanya. Uh, well, we're talking about uh, the, the Tanya that was written by uh, Rav Shnaya Zalman of Liade. The, uh, <laughs> not the song from the Not Gemara. the Rebbe, not the song. But listen. You never know, know what the intention was. If you know the song, it's a start. You know, at least you're, at least you're, you're starting someplace. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the whole concept of the relationship between your your godly soul and your physical body. It's something that I don't think we spend enough time uh, being introspective about and understanding. Yeah. And what what do you think it is? Tanya explains in the very beginning. <laughs> what do you think it is that is the what that ties your your physical being that you are living on this planet and the godly soul that is eternal? And what what are those elements? It's thought, speech, and action. Thought, speech, and action. Those are things that. The um, neshama communicates to your your body, and that you have the ability to perform in this world. Did I explain it okay? What the garments of the soul? Yeah, that's, pretty that's, solid. I'm still caught up on when someone brought us chocolate pudding. Oh yeah, listen, you know our goal uh, is to surprise you. Are you surprised? You know, I was very surprised. I was shocked, but I have to tell you, this this is representative of exactly what we were just talking about, of the material world, <laughs> the kind of things that human beings can relate to, you know, on, on their level. So, you know, if you're, if you're, I thought you'd like it. I, lo- I thought you'd like it like hard on top, like the shell. Yeah. I don't know if they have, know how to make the shell. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think Renaissance, they, come on. I, mean, there's, I don't know how to, I, the, I don't know how the shell is made. It, I think the shell is just, if you leave it out for long enough, it just gets old and stale. No, it has to be, there's something on, you know, you ever go to the yogurt store here, they have that soft chocolate that you pour on the, on the yogurt and it hardens. And you have like uh, the kind. Of I'm not a big yogurt guy. How about how about an ice cream, a chocolate or a vanilla ice cream bar? Yeah, there's a shell of chocolate. Yeah, well they put it in the freezer. No, I don't know. That's not frozen. So I'm, so how do I get it's the hardened cho- chocolate? How do I get what is hardened chocolate? How does that happen? You have to I Google. Don't know. They probably have to Google it. But what Listen, do they do? even what making do they chocolate's do? not easy. You what? think being an engineer and and uh, working for Boeing is hard? Making chocolate is also difficult. Listen, there was there was chocolate. Uh, what they call them? Pops. There were chocolate, it was chocolate pops before there was Google. So how do they find out how to do it if there was no Google? You get asked that about a lot of things. Oh, what what'd you do before the first, Google? The first airplane was built before they had Google. You know everything in the world that you don't know how. To, uh, usually, you ask somebody a question. They, they, if they don't have an answer, nobody says I don't know anymore. Yeah. So they say Google it. Spe- Why don't you Google it? Speaking of Google, speaking of airplanes, they're going to be flying Alal to Israel. How many meaningful people podcast is accessible on? Oh, on, it is. Yeah, there's a twenty four six. There's this new app. That's on the planes on and there? meaningful people podcast is on so the platform. Who, who are you having on Saturday? This Saturday night. This Saturday night. Last night I actually recorded last night with Haskell Bennett. So it's gonna be on posted this Saturday night. Yeah. So I'm not gonna listen to it until I get on the plane. I mean, that'll only take up an hour of your ten hour flight. But I'll listen to it a few times. <laughs> not, you, you'll not listen to it, maybe you listen to Hebrew also <laughs> and maybe Spanish. No, they actually they have they have the, the the new planes have a lot of things that you can listen to. You yeah. Know? A lot of uh, entertainment. Music, the shiurim they have, I think. They have... Shkoyach uh, Kenny. Shkoyach Kenny. All right. It's a, it's a great job and uh, looking forward to uh, a great time in Eretz Yisrael. So, and yeah, we'll have to figure out how we're going to do this. Don't worry, Israel. I got you. I know it's very early to... No reason to think about it yet. It's only... Uh, not going to even re, not even a reality until Hashem next Tuesday. Hashem split the sea, and we will figure out how to do this podcast okay. when you're six thousand miles away. Okay. Um, so the next time you'll be seeing us, no, we'll be here Monday morning. Oh, you're gonna be here Monday morning. Yeah. Okay. Very exciting. So I definitely have a ton of time to figure this out. Yeah. Um, time. No, no reason to rush. I'm gonna go clean the saying. bottom of my shoe now. Thank you everybody oh for tuning in. I would buy new shoes if I were you. <laughs> I should just throw them out. Yeah, I think so. It's a lost cause. It looks like that to me. <laughs> This is a sad, sad day. Uh, hey, nice shoes. I mean, they were nice shoes. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for tuning in this week to okay, the Daily Shabbat Thread. Shalom, everybody. We will be back at you another week next week. And of course, if you have any feedback, you can message us on WhatsApp. Sign up for the WhatsApp status and email us at the Daily Thread at meaningfulminute.org. Have an awesome week. End. <laughs>